Pete told me um, we need to talk about the, how to bless our decision. When you look at the, I thought it's like how to make decisions or something, but when you read, uh, have a closer look, you actually think, I, I believe the, the, the title itself already has a pre-made decision. So you already know that you want to make a decision that aligns with God's will in your life. That's pre-made, predetermined in this topic. So it sounds like we have an agreement that we want to do a decision that's according to God's will. So I just have, do, I'll just consider this an, as, an assumption and um, go from there. So it might be, yeah, it's, it's, um, we are faced with daily decisions, small ones, big ones, HSC, you just mentioned big ball and HSC, choosing uni, uh, is this the right place for me, is this the right topic to study, is this um, later on, is this the right person to get into a relationship with, is it, like, we're being faced with a lot of decisions, and even the smaller ones, it's like, am I, uh, is this the right place to go? Is this the right food to eat? Uh, um, yep. Is this the right outfit to put on for, for this specific um, visit or for this place? It's smaller ones, bigger ones. We always want to be doing... Um, uh, okay, I have to keep doing... All right. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, nice to know. You know. <laughs> Um, so think about we have two ways to to think to approach the topic. First one is like think about um, a rocket ship. An, an animation wouldn't work in this presentation, so you had to. I can't surprise you with the verse. You have to. <laughs> you can kind of guess what I'm going to say, but it's really um, very similar. So if if a rocket ship is um, uh, launched into space, there is no way that a piece of metal will know how, where to go and how to not collide, where, which orbit to be um, around uh, Earth. How, how is it going to know that it's supposed to be this way or not, or this, go this way or this way, or um, not to run into another ship in space or even another bigger rock in space? It does have an internal guidance system, so it's there's someone on Earth in the base station, a human, making the decisions and, and sort of communicating to this rocket ship. But if this rocket ship loses the connection with its base station, it will get lost. So the, the only thing that the rocket ship needs to do, it doesn't need to take a decision, it only needs to tune in to the person who's making the decision on Earth. So we have a very similar guidance system that God blessed us with. He said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring, you, uh, bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So we know we can trust God is faithful. When he makes a promise, he keeps it. So when we read this, we can trust that we do have the internal guidance system. And there is nothing, we don't need to make this. But we only need to tune in to this internal guidance system to listen, to allow it to talk, regardless of the decision that we're going to make. God is going to use it and to bless it only if we are um, very faithful in trying to tune in. So, how can I do that? We have recently studied um, so the Epistle of St. James in the, um, uh, with the kids in the Bible study. Um, and imagine it's um, it's uh, it's only five uh, five chapters. I encourage you to read it. It's full of very very uh, practical and amazing teachings on how to just live as a basic Christian. It's it's very simple. I've never um, completely, and I think I will even if I read it again, I'll even learn more. But I have never completely understood what Saint James was trying to say until you actually try and teach it. So. He has this cycle, and we're going to keep going into this cycle forever. He has four steps. Can someone read? I don't want to be talking all the time. Someone volunteer to read? Can you see? No volunteers? I'll pick. <laughs> okay.
So four steps, it's really a manual. Like when you see, when you look at a manual for, for how to operate any machine, how to operate a coffee machine, it, it, it tells you, turn it on, play the, the thing, put the coffee, press the coffee, put it in the machine. It's like there's steps, right? And you keep going through the steps. It's, it's really a manual. So he said four things. He said, submit to God. If you choose to submit to God, you want to draw near to him. And how do I draw near? Um, that's something um, that Sten Sabuna Joshua told us this uh, teaching before. I've, I've never, I've been preaching. <laughs> it's amazing. The ABCs, I'm sure you know it. What's ABCs? The, do you know the ABCs? So the A is, um, someone know it? I see not. No. Okay. Um, prayer. That's prayer. It's really simple. B. Bible. C. Communion. So three basic things that we all will do. It's A, B, C, Agbeya, Bible, Communion. And uh, it's so easy to remember. And it's Abuna Joshua is here. So since you taught us this, Abuna, the ABCs, uh, it's stuck in my mind and I can never forget it. It's a very easy three-step manual of how to draw near to God. So I want to submit. I want to draw near. How do I draw near? Just do the three ABCs and he'll do the rest. You don't need to do anything else. It's, there is really nothing much to do. It's just Use your affair, read your Bible, go to Holy Com have the Holy Communion, and it's just the rest, God will look after it. Um, and when that happens, you feel compelled to repent. Um, when, 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 when you see yourself in relation to God, you feel how small you are, how big God is, you, you can't really resist repentance. And when you repent, God lifts you up. And when He lifts you up, you draw near. And when you draw near, you see how big He is, how small you are. You repent. So He lifts you up. You draw near. <laughs> so it's, it's really a, a cycle that can keep going forever until we reach to, to Jesus. It's unlimited. So I can't remember the exact verse. It's um, in English, to be honest. Made a comment in the Do you remember it? Someone can find it for me. So we'll, we'll keep going in this cycle to the full length, full knowledge. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. So we will keep going, and once once we go into the cycle, you'll go. You just need to do one thing. Go, go. Just go in any any point. If you repent, he lifts you up. You'll go to the next one. He, Submit. You draw knee, you do your ABCs, you can't resist repentance. He lifts you up, and it's a cycle, it keeps going. You just need to break in. So just do one of those steps, and you break in, and God will do the rest. So that's, that's about um, tuning in. Um, there's also another, so again, did it, um, did it work before? God has sent me the internal guidance system. I have the Holy Spirit inside me. I can listen. That's all um, very well said. But did it work before? Let's see. So he also said, you, do I need to? Okay. He also said, um, if you do not know, just look who, how, how, how did the people before you do it. So if you do not know, or fairest among women, follow in the footsteps of the flock and feed your little goats beside the shepherd's tent. So he's, there's really an easy way, again, to see um, what can we do and did, we, did it work before. So we know the Holy Spirit is inside us. We want some practical steps. So God understands that we have this need. The, we can't really always um, think of um, concepts and we, read, we, we need some practical steps. So he gave us some practical steps. Just look, how did, it, how did other people do it? How did I react to it before? So let's go this, um, through this uh, journey of, through the Bible. People who made decisions and how did, how did God bless it? So I'll read a few... I'll just pass on the Bible then. If, you, if, you, if there's no volunteers, I'll just pick. <laughs> so volunteer. Uh, it's just reading the verse, all right? And we'll start with, uh, already I have the first one. 
open, and it's uh, Genesis 12, verse 1. Who wants to read? Maybe you should um, take this. Okay. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. And in you all families of the earth shall be blessed. Keep going. Can you imagine how hard this decision is? <laughs> it's, he's telling Abraham, leave everything you know, leave your home, um, go somewhere, and I'm not even going to tell you where, where are you going. You're just going. You don't need to know where are you going. You just need to trust him. If I was, um, were Abraham, I would feel, okay, just tell me where we're going. <laughs> it's, the least, it's the least of my rights. You're asking me to leave everything I... I've, I've lived here for like, I think Abraham was like 70 years or something. He was very, very old. And um, you're, God is asking him to go, and he's not even telling him where to go. And that, Abraham could have just said, no, that doesn't make sense. I'm settled here, and I have my family. It doesn't make sense to pack up and go. And so I'll just stay. What would have happened if Abraham um, would have just stayed? We know that after that, Abraham was called the friend of God because of how close he was to God. And I don't think he would have gone anywhere if he didn't listen the first time. But what happens next? There is an even harder decision coming. So if, and I'm, I'm sure you all know the story, but let's just read the verse anyway. Um, it's uh, Genesis 22, verse 2. Verse 2. Genesis 22, verse 2. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Yeah. No. It's not just a harder decision. It contradicts the promise that God made to Abraham. He promised him he's going to be the father of a great nation, and he's going to be the father of a great nation from Isaac his son. And now he's asking him to kill him. It doesn't make sense at all. It, it makes zero sense. <laughs> you promised me I'm going to get a lot of sons from this son, Isaac, and now you're, pro you're asking me to kill him. I don't understand you. It's, it's just not understandable. But again, he had a choice, and it's even harder than the first choice. And the choice that Abraham made was, we all know, he took um, Isaac and he just um, went all the way to the moment that he was going to kill him, but God stopped him, they sent the angel and stopped him and sacrificed the, uh, he sent him a sacrifice instead of Isaac. So, but that made Abraham, who Abraham is, he, it made him, his faith, a living faith, to the, to the, to the extent that there is no other faith in the in any other story in the Bible that can be compared to Abraham and God himself and Jesus himself always refer to Abraham as the ultimate example of faith. That's the result of a choice that didn't make sense at all. I wouldn't kill my son for anything, <laughs> really. It's, it's really, if you, if you imagine, I have a son, I can't imagine even hurting him. It's, it, it's unbelievable. So I can't imagine what Abraham was thinking all the way up the mountain. Now, how can God ask him something that this, that's this cruel? But it's again, it's trust. He trusted that God um, will work it out. Let's go to the next two examples, and then we'll see. Think think about the examples because there is a common line between the three of them. We're going to go through three through three stories, and there's um, two decisions in each of those stories for the same person to make. And at the end of the three stories, um, we need to find a common line. So just start thinking. Um, the second, uh, Daniel, 
chapter 1, verse 8. Can you find Daniel chapter 1, verse 8? <laughs> We're teaching the kids um, Bible study how to find a verse in the Bible. <laughs> and it's, yeah. <laughs> it's three steps. Find the find a table of contents. Find the page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we all know the story, but the blessing of reading the actual um, verse from the Bible makes a lot of difference. When you're, you know the story, just read it and just read the, the exact words again. It will always strike you with something new. Which one? Um, chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the Enochs, and that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chiefs of, of the Enochs, and that the chiefs... I don't know that one. Enoch. <laughs> Is that verse, well, is the verse yeah, done? Right verse 8, yeah. yeah. So it's a really, um, if I'm a slave and the king is asking me to eat from the food I have on the table be, because he wants me to become stronger because I'm going to work for the king, it makes complete sense. Why? And I have every right to eat from the king's food. There, there is nothing wrong um, in the, from the measures of that time from eating from the king's food. And it's just a meal, right? It's just a, not a meal, a few meals. Um, I'm sure God wouldn't have like, got angry with Daniel because he was ordered by the king and Daniel is a slave that is going to eat from the king's food. But Daniel had a choice. It's a small choice. He's going to not eat from the king's food, but the, there is a catch. He doesn't know the consequences. If he chose not to eat from the king's food, he might not be as strong as the other slaves. And he might be, I don't know, he might be killed. We, we don't know. We, we will never know. But he didn't know the consequences of his choice. But he realized that he has a choice. He knows that God told him not to eat such and such food from the wine or the food that was offered to the idols. And so he had a choice and he's not going to eat from the king's food. And he, it was a, a firm choice. But then he got faced by another even harder choice. It's, it's not always, if we make the right choice the first time, it doesn't mean we're going, it's going to be easier the next time. It's going to be harder, actually. So the next time we read um, Daniel 6, verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that his writing was signed, he went home, and, he, and in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day. He prayed and gave thanks before his God, and, and before his God as was his custom since early days. Yeah. So a plot against Daniel. Others know that Daniel prays all the time. They don't want him in town, so they decide to tell the king, um, ask everyone to um, not to only pray for your God. And Daniel is faced with another choice. Well, if I were Daniel, I'd just go into my room, close the windows, and still pray. I'm still doing the right thing, okay? <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to stop praying. I'm still going to pray, but there's no need for everyone to see me. <laughs> I'm going to be caught. I'm going to be... Um, he knows this time the consequences that he might get in trouble. But he's not, uh, his choice was, um, I'm going to open the window and pray, not once, not twice, three times on this day. It's like he's making a statement. No, I am a, I am, um, a worshiper of this God. I'm not going to worship any other God. And I'm happy to declare this in front of everyone. Um, and I, 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 don't, I don't really care about your, your consequences. 
So it's a very clear message. It's, it's a very blunt and strong message. But it was a choice. Uh, if Daniel chose to pray with an, a closed window, what would have happened? Nothing really, I don't think ever, anything would have happened. It's, no one will know that he's still praying for his God, and that's it. But he chose to pray in front of everyone, and he, he bore the trouble that he went into because of his choice, but he was glorified after that. Third story, because it looks like I'm taking uh, a long time. Uh, someone who we don't talk about much, but he's a very, very inspiring person. We don't know much about him, but... It's, He's really inspiring. So let's um, um, go Matthew, go forward, Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. Then Joe. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. Can you read the next one? But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. So, a choice. Joseph, is, uh, he has Mary who was betrothed to him. She's not supposed to be pregnant at that time. And um, he finds out she's pregnant. And he has a choice. It, by the law, he is entitled to, um, um, to if, if, the, if it's known, she's entitled, he's entitled to kill her, <laughs> basically. Because she's done something very, very wrong. Um, but instead, he chooses the um, he chooses the kindness path. So he decides to just let her go. But God doesn't want him to think this way of Mary. So he tells him, "Don't be afraid. You can just Mary is pregnant with the Son of God, and you can um, you can trust that she's she's a good person. So you can keep her." So he chooses to bear um, all this uh, looks. It's not just Mary that that the that what was looked down upon. I would imagine it's again Joseph. He's just like he's supposed to be her husband, and and she's pregnant, and she can't be pregnant. <laughs> so it must have been very very embarrassing. But he chose to do the right thing over his own dignity. The next choice is even bigger. So let's go Matthew two verse thirteen. Who's reading next? Um, chapter 2, number 13. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dreamer, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and stay there until I bring, bring you word for Herod, will seek the young child to destroy him. Yeah. So God is asking him, Jesus is in trouble as a baby, take Mary, Mary and, the, uh, and the kid and just flee to Egypt and, and just stay there until you can come back. Again, he's leaving. He's a very old man. He's not up to the trip. Mary's pregnant. Oh, sorry, Mary has a baby. And it's, um, it's, a, it's a very difficult trip. He could have said, okay, I looked after her this far. If that's the son of God, you should be looking after him. He shouldn't be killed and I can just stay. Why do I have to run away? <laughs> Again, it's, it's a request that doesn't make sense to Joseph. But he had a choice, and he had a choice. His choice was to listen. So he made the choice to just go away and, and go through the trip and stay there for three years until um, he was told to come back. So the three people that we have spoken about had made two choices, um, and there is a common line between them. Can someone think of anything? What's common? I just said yeah. I think that was sort of like went against the norm. They went against the norm. So like Daniel went against the norm, like everyone wants to be like Joseph. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For the community, yeah, yeah. That's the third thing. I saw two things that the third one, but it's really inspiring. <laughs> I agree. I hundred percent agree. So it doesn't always, um, it doesn't always look like the right choice from for the community. It might be for the community. It's like, a, what's wrong with going to this party? It's like, I can just go and party and have fun and have a good time. But it's for the community. It's the it's the choice that makes sense. But for me, as a Christian, as a son of God or daughter of God, it's not the choice that makes sense. It's I, I need to go against that common understanding because I'm different. That's the whole point of the St. James epistle. It, he was talking about how to live differently. So that's the thing. The other thing I saw in, um, in those three decisions is that all those decisions were made in an atmosphere of prayer. None of these three people made the decisions without being into this cycle. They were always, or the three of them, were an example to this in its own way. Um, Abraham, because of how uh, close he was to God, he was even called a friend of God. That's what the Bible calls him. It's, he is the friend of God. It's a relation, he, he was always tuned in, he was always in this connection. Um, Daniel, well the second, the second choice is self-explanatory. He chose to pray even though it had um, bad consequences. He could have got killed. It was again an atmosphere of prayer. Um, Joseph, he was um, the righteous man. That's what the Bible teaches us about him, that he was a righteous man. So it's, again, he was always tuned in. He always had this connection um, to God to bless whatever decision he has made. That's the first thing I saw. The, the second thing um, I noticed common between those th three stories is that most of the time they trusted that God is in control even though they had no idea what's going to happen next. Abraham didn't know how, where is he going and didn't know what's going, how is he going to have a, be a father of a great nation from Isaac while God is asking him to kill him. He didn't know. But he had this faith in God that he is in control. He is faithful and he is going to fulfill his promise. Uh, Daniel, first time... <laughs> I didn't know what to say. No, that one is not working. So he had, he had no idea what's going He didn't know that he's going to become stronger. <laughs> he, was, he actually became stronger eating only vegetables, which doesn't make sense. But that's again, God can just go in there with his hands and do something completely unexpected, completely unknown, only if you trust him. So we trust that we're going to make the choice that aligns with God's will. How do we know that this is the choice that aligns with God's will? We only need to tune in. You will automatically do this choice. That's going to be automatically your choice. You don't have to think about it. You, all the practical step, the only practical step, if we can get away from today with only one takeout, is tune in. Tune in to this Holy Spirit inside us. Tune in to God has given us an amazing privilege dwelling inside us that we are in complete continuous connection 
to him. We can always hear his voice. It doesn't matter where we, we where we are. It doesn't matter um, what's happening around us. It doesn't matter if I'm at work or college or um, attending a class or attending a meeting or sleeping or um, or, or having lunch. Any anywhere really. You can just tune in. You can just say a short prayer, and you can trust that he listens, and you can trust that he's in control. And that's the only thing that we need to do. The rest is for him to do. If we do this, we will automatically make the right decision. We will make a decision if it's not right or wrong. Like if there is no right or wrong in um, choosing um, subject A over subject B, there is no right or wrong. But if I'm tuned in, if, I'm, if I have this connection, I can trust that God will guide me to, do the, this, to ha make the decision that's going to get me the best outcome in my life, even if I don't know now that it's going to get me the best outcome of my life. I, have, I had no idea that moving to Australia is going to end up anywhere. I, just, I was just thinking at that time that I have a little girl and um, um, I, I just I don't like the community and I want to go and raise this girl somewhere else. And I knew that I'm going to leave stuff and um, leave family behind. And stuff. But that's the, the, I have no idea how uh, my life is going to turn up here. But you know, because God, either, I, I believe that either I chose to stay in Egypt, for instance, or move to Australia, God will still use this decision to bless my life and come up with an amazing outcome that I had no idea that he had hidden for me. I don't know what's going to happen, but I can just trust that. You know how we say trust the process when there is a process at work? We always trust the process because we put a pro some, someone has thought through this process in every bit, and um, if you just follow the process, you'll just get to this outcome regardless of what you do. We can just trust that God has given us the Holy Spirit that's dwelling inside. It's going to always keep talking to us, even if we don't realize it in so many ways. The world speaks to you. Everything around you speaks to you. The Bible speaks. The people speak. You attend a, a talk somewhere else you, that you're not used to. It speaks. You do the daily reading that... Um, that's not, you're not just going to open the Bible and just um, see what's, what's, going, what's God going to tell me today. In your daily reading, you see a certain message that addresses a certain need that you are after, God's voice today. It, just if we ask, St. James, in the epistle of St. James again, I can't get it out of my head, he was saying, you just need to ask. <laughs> if anybody lacks wisdom, just ask. It's so easy. Ask. Go into your room and pray and ask, God, I need wisdom for this. He will give it to you. He's happy to give it liberally and without control and without limits. But we just need to ask. And we need to ask for the right reasons, not for the wrong reasons. God, I want to go to this party. Why? <laughs> What's the reason that you want to do this? God, I want this car. Why? Why do you need this car? Uh, you can just have this one and it's going to fulfill the same need. But, God, I want to know you. Oh, that's, that's, that's according to God's will. You can rest assured that God will never say no to this prayer. God, I want to know you. Or, God, I want to draw near to you. You're asking the right thing. You know that you're asking the right thing. And you can have 100% trust that God is going to say, yes, okay, draw near to me. And I will give you more and more until you say, enough, I don't want any more. I think I took a long time, so any <laughs> recap. I always love the recap, the recap slide. Two ways to bless our decisions. Tune in to the Holy Spirit, like the rocket ship. How? We do this cycle. Submit, draw knee, repent, he lifts you up. You submit, you draw knee, repent, he lifts you up. The second way is, the very practical um, way, follow the steps of the flock. Like who? We, we, we had three examples, but the Bible is full of examples of people who made the right decisions and the wrong decisions. And we can tell from the story how did they make the right decision or wrong decision. Um, the, how do we know that our decisions are blessed? Two things, and I think Tim added the third thing. Um, atmosphere of prayer. Facing the Lord 
um, regardless of the consequences, and it's okay to go against the norm. That's the recap. Any questions? Yeah. The streaming of the Peter question. So, is it always hard to make positive choices? And if it's hard, does it ever get easier? Or is it sometimes? It depends on your definition of hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard, yeah. Yeah. Um, my personal experience, I can't tell for everyone. I can just share my personal experience. I think the more you tune in, the easier it gets. It's not, the decision can be harder, but the choice can be easier. So it's, it, uh, if we again go back to Abraham, it must have been super hard to decide to just leave and go, pack up and go. And it, it, it must have been a very hard decision, I can't even imagine it. Um, but then the second decision, he didn't even think about it. The decision is hard, but the choice that he made, it was easy for him to make his choice, to make up his mind, even though the choice that he made was the harder choice and it was the, ah, oh, choice. It was, yeah, it's the decision is always going to be hard, but your ability to make the hard decision is going to increase exponentially the more you tune in. Just on that, I heard something really nice. It was saying like um, our, first re our first reaction to any decision or um, anything that we need to sort of do is always survival. Like, it was, it was an interesting sort of perspective. Like, the first thing we always think of is, you know, how can I survive? Or, like, for example, if I, you know, let's say, for example, I have to give a, um, uh, you know, I have to give a talk or I have to give a speech, my first reaction is always, how am I going to survive? Like, how am I, you know, it's... I, it's... Uh, what... what <laughs> I don't think it's about selfishness. I think it's more about what's the easiest or what's the easiest thing for me, almost. Like, you know, what, how will I maintain this level of um, comfort or how, how will I remain in my comfort zone? So by tuning in or by, you know, taking two or three seconds to just raise your heart in prayer, you're almost shifting your mind from survival to, like, to know what does God want, yeah, or what what does God want? It's not, you know, you know, it's it's absurd that I'm that I'm I'm going to reject this opportunity when I've been called to you know to give a talk, whatever it might be. And just it's, it, that's the example. But if we take that second and we just think, but what does God want me to do? I think that's where the whole um, you know tuning in aspect takes, at the moment. Thank you. Discussions, opinions, stories. <laughs> okay, glory be to God. Thanks, Minerva. That was uh, that was very lovely, and that concludes our um, our series on making decisions. So, hopefully, we're a lot more better equipped. Um, to make those decisions, whether it be small or large, and, and, and we can, you know, we can do that that tuning in, and we can, um, and yeah, I love that. I love that whole idea of it. It, it sort of reminds me, actually, of um, there's a saying by a father I can't remember who. Um, he says, "Love God and do what you will." Some people perceive it like, you know, oh, if I love God, I can just do whatever I want. But I think in tuning into God, you know, we're going to make the right decisions. So I love that. Um, next week we're actually blessed with Sam Cowdes. I'm sure we've had Sam, Sam Cowdes a few times. is is a is a very good speaker, very articulate, and um, you know um, the things he says is just 
yeah, the way the way his mind works, the perspective he gives is is really great. So look forward to seeing everyone there. The topic is um, counterfeit gods, um, and uh, the idol. What is it? Hidden idol factory. So the hidden idol factory that um, the sweatshops that we got going, making making factories in the back and selling them on eBay. So that's what he'll talk to us about. No, no, it's it's a spiritual talk. It's not a business talk. Um, other than that, in terms of announcements, just be weary of all the masses we have during the week. We have, the times always skip me, but we have Tuesday 6 to 8 p.m. We have Thursday morning 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. We have Saturday from 8 to 10, I believe, and then we have Sunday from 8 to 11. And we, do we have Wednesday? Do we? Oh, 8 to 10, we have a Wednesday Mass. I didn't even know. Oops. Sorry, Bono. Huh? Friday? And, and we have um, Masses every 29th of February. Every four years. Every leap year. So be sure to attend. Next leap year. Next leap year. Um, other than that, I think we're good. We're good to... Is there any other announcements? We'll just take a quick photo of everyone. Um, if you don't have a mask, just put your mouth on your face. No, <laughs> all good.